What? Right on. All right. My name is Xavier Hawk, and on behalf of Fire On Global Partners and the North American Bitcoin Conference, I'm really grateful to be here and to be sharing with you some of my visions and perspectives on the market. I'm going to um, talk about securities, blockchain securities, the fundamentals of them, and I'm going to talk about also the perfect system. I've been in the game, uh, here's the itinerary, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and why I'm even relevant to being up here. We're going to talk about securities as an overview. I'm going to talk very fast and passionately, so please do pay attention. ICOs and how securities are relevant to ICOs at this time, thoughts and considerations on the entire market, and we're going to talk about then the perfect system and how that's applicable to the whole ecosystem. First, I want to say one thing, though, something that just came up in that last talk, the idea of our timetables. We've seen the blockchain development go from wild, wild west, where everybody was just releasing coins, selling coins, starting with Ethereum, with a the foundation. They did a very good job, and I'll tell you why. Um, but we're looking at different stages of the market. We've gone from the wild, wild west. Now we're coming into the securities market, as everybody's been discussing here in this, at this conference, um, and why that's a good thing because we're getting a more regulated market, and what we're actually going towards is a stable-priced, distributed, digital, global currency. That is the big end game here of the whole market, if I'm going to give you my perspective from where I stand. All right. So I did a lot of stuff. I've been in the game since 2012, 2013. The way I started was I had an eco-village. I retired early because I developed a home health agency south, south Florida from the ground up, sold that, moved to the mountains, grew vegetables and goats and children, and got off grid and looked at the system. And at basically at that time, in like 2011, 2012, it was like, shit, everything's collapsing, fuck this, right? So I looked at Bitcoin and I said, we need an internal accounting mechanism on our eco-village. We were teaching courses online, we were having people come through, and I needed a, an internal uh, currency, essentially. So I designed what I didn't know at the time, but would be a uh, revolutionary concept in the world of currencies. And in 2014, we launched it and discussed it and became, you know, well known throughout the, the planet basically for um, a really rel revolutionary currency that could end poverty. And it's interesting that they brought up socialism. I'll discuss that in a few minutes. So the problems of the planet are allocation of resources, poverty, banking, governance, and then the blockchain and Bitcoin came around. What I mean by the problems of poverty and allocation, we've got banking consolidated with an entire group of individuals. Private banking has revolutionized the planet, given us a global civilization. But we are on the verge of a truly global civilization. And having the power and um, financial resources of just a few individuals directing the course of the planet is not the way we continue as a planet to solve these problems. The governments of the world are not going to solve these problems. Uh, poverty of allocation of resources. The UN's not going to. Space aliens are not going to. We have to. So the, the, the linchpin in this whole conversation is accountability. And I'm going to explain to you why the current market has no accountability and what we're doing to prevent that and, and change that. Okay, so the blockchain and Bitcoin comes about and I say, wow, this is more than just a currency. This is an opportunity for us to be accountable to individuals, each other, have a verifiable transaction, have a verifiable vote, have a verifiable identity without the intermediation of a government and or a bank. Because that's their game, right? They create the systems that we play in and they take and harvest all of the, the monies that we're using and interest rates and all of these things and they allocate it where they want to allocate it. This is not how you steer a global civilization, right? So we've come up with a solution for that. So I'm going to talk about securities. If any, since 2013, I've been saying all of these are fucking securities. There is no real utilities out there, in my opinion, and my perspective. We went and talked to the SEC in 2013 about this, and with the launch of our asset-backed currency, at that time it was called permacredits. So what we realized was that all of these, minus Ethereum, and the reason why is because they started a foundation that was developed specifically to develop code, and so they're not they're not able to turn around and get capital gains, they're not turning around and selling the company, but all of these for-profit companies are selling what at the time, when they say utilities, is really gymnastic legalese for, hey, we wanted to be able to sell this without having to deal with accredited investors. And what we're watching is the maturation of the market now, where anybody who's really in the game, the wild, wild west is over, now we're gonna look at real securities, and you wanna see what companies are actually following that suit. In utility coins, they wouldn't fluctuate in price, and they wouldn't be able to be used outside of the system. They strictly would have utilitarian function. So there are very few coins that are out there that do that, and legitimately so, but for a, for a whole, as a market looking at it, if, as an investor, I would look at them and say, all of, if they don't have the paperwork, the SAFT, or the, the right contracts that actually denote this and treat it as a security, I run the other way. 
this is not investment advice, this is just my own personal experience. So it would be a stable price coin if it were a utility coin, but anything that has actual fluctuation in value or the expectation on the behalf of the purchasers, then you're talking about a security. Again, you know, there's still maybe money to be made in that utility market, but that to me is not inherently integrous. What you're doing is you're taking a coin and saying it's this, and then the hype goes, and people who are not necessarily educated in the system, who are not accredited investors, go buy it, and it's just a big fleecing of those folks, and that just doesn't feel right to me. So we have been doing the long game and been making sure that we're following the long strategy here, what the market is going to really mature to and what we believe to be the perfect system. Um, so private versus public chains, all the consultation I've done with governments and large corporations is about private chains. They can't have the exposure. I'm going to give you some ideas to think about when you're looking at this market. They can't handle the exposure that a public chain would offer. You want to know who your, your users are, the ingress and egress points, and be able to control that and ultimately like manage that, right? So if anybody's offering a public chain and it's not a foundation, I'm sort of wary of that because I don't, I don't see the function and value um, because there's no accountability. Again, the linchpin of this conversation is accountability. So smart contracts, they gave a good point up here just a few moments ago about the use of smart contracts and betting on insurance and other things. There's some more complications to it, but we have yet to see truly um, universal smart contracts that are applicable in the large scale. We're talking to ourselves usually at these conferences, right? And as the market goes up, we begin speaking to the rest of the world. And the mass adoption that Steve was talking about earlier, when Starbucks is using a coin, when all of these companies are actually using the blockchain, people aren't gonna necessarily know it's a blockchain currency, they don't care. They don't care about PayPal, they don't put stickers about PayPal up on their, on their computers, they put lifestyle corporations up on their stickers if they have any, right? So for me, when I see this market developing, as we go through this securities uh, stage, which might last you know, two, three years, we're gonna see the real development of projects that come out that are actually applicable to the large-scale population at whole, but it's going to be based on lifestyle, not on currencies, because nobody really gives a damn about how fast or how quick or how, you know, their, their, their payment mechanism. They'll use whatever is efficient and doesn't have the most problems, but it's not something that they think about. It's something we do as people who are interested in the system. So, and for anybody who's investing, I realize, you know, you may already know this, but there are tax implications for all of these different securities, and there are tax implications if you airdrop something, you have no basis points, you have a, a large exposure there. So just be aware of those things. So in relation to the ICO market, you're, you're certainly aware that there are certain ICOs that launch, and they're doing it for fundraising and lack of accountability because there's no um, voting and or recourse necessarily. The SAFs are written, we, we spent a year and a half developing a proper SAF or a proper security offering, and we feel like it's one of the best contracts on the market. Um, so what we do is we take, uh, well, actually, the security versus utility thing again. You know, you want to make sure that whoever's offering these, and if you're looking at companies, I look for companies that are recognizing that this is a securities market now. So good versus bad ICO is it a kid that can code, that's got a great white paper, and doesn't necessarily have the, the management that, they, that, that other companies have or that experienced entrepreneurs have. That can work but it's very much more rare than it is with somebody who has experience building companies from the foundation up and having true revenue models and having real exits and having the proven track record. Those are some things that you want to check into. And also accountability. Are they accountable to the, the stakeholders, to the equity holders, to the paper holders, to the security holders? These are, these are metrics that I look at. And transparency. I want to be able to look... This is all about transparency, right? Accountability, blockchain. I want to be able to look at what a company is doing, how they're spending money, and I want to be able to have a say and a voice if I'm putting my resources, my passion, my creativity, my hours that I've traded for dollars and I'm using that system, then I want to be able to have accountability as well. And this is again between the short, like if this were the tortoise and the hare race, I am definitely the tortoise in this game because I've been speaking about the same thing since, since 2013 and now the market is proving me right. I talked about securities back in 2013. I talked about how we went and dealt with the SEC. So also jurisdictions and exchanges, you want to make sure that they're a regulatorily uh, friendly environment, even if they're a sandbox for a bigger country, right? Because that happens as well. You want to know what, how long that is going to be and, if it's, and what their tax implications are there. And when their security offering goes public, like ours is, then you want to know if you are a citizen of the UK or a citizen of Bermuda or a citizen of uh, Liechtenstein or the EU, the greater EU, what your tax implications are there. And if the company is providing you with that information, that's a good signature and a good indication that they, they, they know what they're doing. So the reality of the current strategies is, especially you know, last year and the year before, was like, we've got a coin and we think the, the coin's going to go up because we have this cool idea and there's hype and people are going to buy into it. That 
works on the short term, and it worked then, but as we can see now, the market has really destroyed all of the weak hands, the people who don't believe in the blockchain or came in for a quick buck. They're kind of being schluffed aside now, and all of us who are still doing the work and doing the real uh, development are still in the game. So thoughts and considerations. The reality of the decentralized market is uh, it's not a reality. Bitcoin core developers are a core group of maybe six individuals who all work for the same company and the same foundation. They make decisions on how the blockchain is developed and how, how it develops further, but none of you who are holding Bitcoin get to say anything about that. Just like the Federal Reserve, if you have a Federal Reserve dollar in your pocket or use it on a credit card, you have no say in where the trillions of dollars that are made off of that system, harvesting your energy, your passion, your creativity, your calories that you quantify in dollar packets, right? The data goes into a dollar packet. You're using that in a system to make your lives better and do all of these things. But all of that energy is harvested, trillions of dollars go there, and nobody has a say in how the world is developed or what direction the planet steers on. Same with tax dollars. You can't vote where your taxes go. Things would change tremendously if we had the ability to dictate and determine where our uh, produce and, and, and revenues go towards in developing the planet. Then we have real say in what we are becoming a truly global civilization. So public versus private chains, I spoke about that. The nature of the bubble is a lot of folks were looking, especially what they just said earlier, they're looking at the economy of cryptocurrency as an exit strategy, not an investment, because the system does not serve them. And this is a lot of the libertarian ideas that, that they were talking about and how you know, the, the whole system, kind of the whole space started with that. Because... We want accountability. We want to have and live in a world that makes sense, that where we're going as a civilization is something that we feel like we can be a part of, where it's not feeling like collapse at every other moment or that there's some huge problem that we as a global civilization can't handle. If we have a system that works, then we can do that. So they're going into that bubble and putting more and more money and staying out of the, the fiat as much as they can. They don't want to pay their taxes, so they're investing in more, and this created that, that sort of bubble idea that everybody was talking about because it's not about creating new investment models so that we can still live in that. It's about creating an ecosystem that's strong enough to be able to withhold and withstand any onslaught like we're seeing from the major banks to all of the, um, you know, I've been involved in on off, off, off desk trading with hundreds of, billion, hundreds of millions of dollars. Big banks buying as much as they can of cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. It's not as decentralized as you think, and all of the fluctuations in the market are a necessity to be able to maintain that system rather than provide a uh, fertile ground where we can grow an entirely new civilization out of. This is big meta stuff from like the inception of the blockchain, right? So everybody's going to have, uh, every corporation's going to have different chains, and each data set is going to be bulkheaded to that specific chain so that there aren't uh, big data breaches. It's one of the most secure systems in the world, the blockchain, right? So if we can provide uh, bulkheaded data, one for transactions, one for ID, one for uh, voting, all of these things, if a system gets hacked, it's only bulkheaded to that one, one thing rather than the user IDs for everybody, like with what happened with Facebook. Security tokens, this is the market. This is the next phase. Right now, we are going to watch the coins go back up in price. We're going to watch the market develop and we're going to watch the, um, the uh, refinement of the system and it's going to be the real players are going to still be here like us. So the perfect system, security tokens. It would be equity tokens for the investors. It would be provide paper and it would provide a token. The paper equity would give a right to distributions and voting of fiat profits that the company made and then the token distribution, the equity token, would provide uh, token profits. In our system, for instance, when we develop new tokens for clients and we take our system and replicate and license, we, create, we get a portion of all of their tokens that they create We get a, at the Genesis event. And we distribute that to our investors for new tokens. And then any revenue that we're making in fiat profits from transaction fees, we turn that and distribute that to our investors as well. So you want to see actual returns. You want to see a basis for the actual token and a basis price and a reasoning why that it's, it's that price beyond just the valuation of the company. Right? So true decentralization, true voting. The ideal system would have a walled garden where you are accountable, your true identity is known, you have a, a real ID, you have um, transactional capabilities and transparency, data is bulkheaded so that there can't be a breach, and you would have true accountability. People would be able to vote and determine where the revenues that are being made in the profit of the system go to. Right? Do we develop schools? Do we develop more housing? Do we do uh, greater distributions to the paid members of the, the membership? It'd be a commons-owned membership. We've solved Eleanor Ostrom's eight problems, or eight problems of the... the, the eight, of the, uh, the tragic of the commons um, by incentivizing, creating a merit system that people are involved in, where it's like you gamify and role play, essentially, you create stats for yourself and you role play your co corporate life, your social life, and your personal development life. 
So it would be a stable price currency. So the, the, the three stages, we, we've got the old wild west where the currencies were all kinds of crazy, then now we're developing in the securities market, and then we're going to go into actual currencies that people can use at a Starbucks. And in our system, the corporation pays direct deposit to the Starbucks or to any of the vendors. In exchange, we get the transaction fees on all the transactions. So we create a, a walled garden ecosystem, a private buyer's club, where we get a fraction of every transaction that happens. And when we do that, we take that kitty and everybody votes on how that gets distributed distributed. So can reward and pay the members who are doing more based upon their merit and their actual contributions to the system, and we get to privatize their data. And again, it's not about the specific chain, it's about the proper use of the proper chain for the specific task that it needs. We are about to launch our app into the, to the store. We took a quarter um, of the million dollars that we were looking in our seed round, built the app, built the systems, and we're ready to, to do that. We're still in our seed round. My name is Xavier Hawk, and thank you very much for your time.